Hello and welcome to the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of the Premier League and the Champions League. I'm Robbie Musto, he's Robbie Earl, and here are today's topics. Manchester United's thrilling back and forth win over Arsenal at Old Trafford and what was going through new manager Ralph Rannick's mind as he watched from the stands. Plus Liverpool's Merseyside masterclass at Goodison Park over a hapless Everton. Chelsea and Man City keeping pace with away victories at Watford and Aston Villa. And Tottenham's key win over Brentford to stay within touching distance of the top four. All that and more coming up. All right, Robbie Earl. Mm. Only one place to start. Um, <laughs> old money of English football. Manchester United versus Arsenal. Mm. Man United found a way to win three goals to two. A game that had a little bit of everything. Wow. Good atmosphere at Old Trafford, Rob. Yeah. Ralph, Rolf Rangnick, of course, the new manager. Uh, interim. It's going to be in charge from tomorrow onwards. Was in the stands watching the game. Mm. Uh, let's let's before we talk about him. Let's go to the game, Rob. And yeah. uh, I don't know. Biggest. Give me give me some kind of big picture thoughts of of the match in general. Well, we had quite incredible goal that was scored that people weren't mm. sure what should have happened, what did happen. Um, but I think we got to the right result in in the end. I thought Martin Axon had a good game today, and VAR played its part. We'll talk about that goal in a moment. We'll talk about Arsenal, and I want to I want to talk about them because we didn't get much time on the broadcast no. in terms of play starting the game. I thought missed an opportunity to really push home their advantage when they were one 0 up. United were a bit thrown out by the first goal, and I thought Arsenal allowed United back into the game. We have to talk Cristiano Ronaldo. I mean, eight hundred goals, Robbie Musto, eight hundred. And 801 goals for club and country. Staggering. Um, and we have to talk about Ralph Ranić coming in, Michael Carrick moving on. And mm. the football club starting to go in a, in a very different, maybe more serious direction. Mm. Um, so those are, those are my, my headlines, Rob. But what, what, pardon me what, what, what I thought was, and you said it, you know, two old money clubs. These two used to be the best we had in the country. This used to be one and two generally, you yeah. know, with, with two great managers. And and they're they're both a bit below where they, they want to get to, both trying to get back in, in very different ways. I think there's hope for Manchester United. I think a three two win tells you everything about United. These goals, these threats, but these things that need addressing. Um and I think Ralph Ranick will sit there and know that. But I think there's enough to work with, Rob, for this Manchester United team to look for a top four spot. Mm. That's got to be the aim right now. Yeah, and uh, there is a lot to work with, a lot to take in from him as well, Rob, given the way that he he tries to play is very different to what we saw from Manchester United tonight. Um, just just quick on the incidents, Rob, and I, I don't know whether we do need to, to clear clear up the first goal. I think I think most people kind mm. of agreed that the goal should stand. Yeah. Um, Fred, it was, who, who stepped on the foot of David De Gea, who goes to ground and rolls away from the play. The ball comes out and Emil Smith Rowe hits it first time almost, and mm. he goes in the back of the net. And the referee, I think, looks up and thinks, Well, wow, goalkeeper's down. But before he can do anything, the, the ball's in the back of the net. Yeah. In a normal situation, I think when a goalkeeper's down like that, you, the referee would blow the whistle and allow him to get treatment. Um, so I think, I think we, you know, again, like, I think the consensus is that that's kind yeah, of, kind of a, yeah. it's kind of fair play. Yeah. What we said is like from David De Gea's point of view, maybe he, he thought, Rob, that, that the referee would spot him. Yeah. But there was no imminent immediate danger by going and rolling around. That was his mistake. Yeah. Because, yeah, if the ball would have been plus somewhere else, then somewhere else, then flipped into the box, the referee would have blown the whistle and the play would have stopped. The game would have stopped. But it didn't. And it was a risk I think he took that was a, a bad decision where mm. really, Rob, he shouldn't, shouldn't he just, just got just on with get it? get back up and, you know, even yeah. if you got an injury, d- defend the ball that comes in, get a bit of treatment and we move on. But it was a goal that went behind and it set a tone and, and yeah. Arsenal started to look a little bit more comfortable in possession, territory, played a little bit better football. And I just thought at that time, I want to just bring in the, the Arsenal line. Well, I thought yeah. it was a day of learning for Arsenal today. I, I thought, you know, it's a young group who are coming together, have had a good run. Um, will be by Liverpool and, and will be disappointed to be, be beaten by Manchester United. But there's a number of players in, 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 in there who are growing into Arsenal players, growing into Premier League players, putting their careers together. And I just thought they missed an opportunity at 1-0. 
I thought individual errors, Tavares gets cool out of position to let United in on the second goal, I think, for Ronaldo. Uh, Odegaard, I mean, scored a goal to bring them level, then does a, a rash challenge on Fred, panics a little bit because Fred gets ahead of him. And those are things which, in a way, I was kind of saying to myself, you've got to go through that learning sometimes to, to, to figure it out. It's okay people saying you should do this or you should do that. But I think it's those kind of learnings, it's those kind of experiences that, that stand you in good stead for, for down the road. And, and there was, there's, there's enough good things still going on at Arsenal that Mikel Arteta can work with. Mm -hmm. But I thought a day of learning is important for young players as long as you know, you're not making those mistakes on a, on a regular basis. What's good, Rob, that we can bring to our broadcasting and, and this mm. podcast is being in situations and playing against teams that, yeah. that have what this Arsenal team is going to have to try and get. And that's all we can do. We can think back about great sides and how mm. they get through difficult periods. Yeah. And I wrote down, actually, on my notes watching the game in the second half, maybe lacked a bit of mentality, leadership and experience. So same stuff as what you're suggesting, like... The great teams, the teams that end up winning stuff, find ways through bad periods. Yeah, You know, I'm not sure you get two or three players every, in a game, particularly against the big boys. They've lost against all the big boys, really, mm. uh, making mistakes. That can't happen again. Tavares yeah. has to learn quickly, Rob. I yeah. mean, he did uh, against uh, Liverpool, didn't he, recently? Yeah. Yeah. Odegaard's got to learn not yeah. to get the wrong side and then slide in to make mm. a challenge that we're like, oh, that's going to be a penalty. Yeah. Now, whether it's leadership, whether it is a winning mentality, a steal, a durability that they need to go with, some mm. talent and some silky play. And we know the manager wants to play that way. But that's something now that he's got to work on. Be consistent. Mm. Be tough. Like, that's a tough... I mean, it's tough. Old Trafford mm. away, when they're behind, they come roaring back at you out of desperation. Their game is always better. And it's just a, yeah, learning experience mm. and, and what they need. They're, they're not anywhere near what they potentially could be with some of these young players. But that was just an example of yeah. sometimes you've got to roll your sleeves up, right? And and, put, and 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 slide in and track runners and have a go at your teammates to stay in the game. Or you have to have the courage to take the ball and to say, no, give me the ball. Come on, let's play. Let's play. And get United. Like, like they did at the start, by the way. Arsenal yeah, started yeah. the game really yeah. well. But they scored it and they dropped off. And that's happened, that's happened a few other times, Rob. I think I definitely remember saying it on the podcast that they – they look great, and then they kind of just switch off from the game. So, again, these little lessons yeah. that they need to learn um, are not huge issues, but a reason no. why they, they lost the game. Yeah, and then sometimes you have to go through tough times to come out the other side, and I think that is part of learning. And, and you know, you're, you're learning in the job. You're not going to be pulled out of the side. It's not one of those situations where you make a mistake, you're out. You make a mistake, now you've got to learn and get better. And I thought that that was um, hopefully will be a pleasing thing for Arteta that his team are learning. Going back to, to, to Manchester United, Rob, and, and, and Pablo Maestro, who was, was hosting the show today, I thought came up with it with um, an interesting suggestion when he, he, he sort of asked us both off air. You know, do, if a manager's sitting up there, uh, the new guy's coming in, and we knew Ralph Ranyuk, we had pictures that he, that he was there, he was watching the game. Would Does that affect your performance in any way? Because he said, you know, if one of our bosses at work was in, hmm. would you start thinking about it? And, and I thought that was, that was quite an interesting point because, you know, I'm sure if, if, if you knew the boss was in the building, if, if I was playing in, in Ralph Rannick's air, I'm going to be busting a gut, Rob, to make sure that this guy thinks, I need Earl in my team. Earl gives me something. Earl drives yeah. on. Earl follows runners. So yeah. Yeah. I think it was a little bit like, you know, one, one or two were on show for the manager to show what they can do. And mm. um, I thought one or two showed up well, really. And I think there'll be things that he certainly can work with. Well, obviously, there's certainly things that I think he'll, he'll want to... Um, work on with this team because again the press at times isn't that coordinated their comfort in possession sometimes isn't as, as, as good as you'd like for a team as technically good as united could be um but there is moments they've got a great goal scorer um they've got a bit of shape and, and at times every now and then it's it clicks and you start thinking oh that's better that's how it could look on a more regular basis i think it's pretty obvious that between bruno fernandez and cristiano ronaldo as a nine and a 10, mm. super talented players. Got the goals today. Made it happen. I think there was bonuses in Alex Tellez and, uh, and Diego Dalot as well, to be fair, Rob. The fullbacks that aren't yeah. the normal fullbacks. Thought they did mm. pretty well. Um, I'll tell you where I, I was disappointed today. I've been disappointed for a little while now. And it's such a critical part of the team. Marcus Rashford and Jaden Sancho, Robbie Earl, 
the wide forwards of Man United yeah. are not giving what you would expect from a top club and so-called, you know, top players. Mm -hmm. When you consider some of the other attacking wide forwards in the other clubs and what they do consistently, Rashford and Sancho is whether it's going to be those two in the wide areas for Ralph Ragnick is, is almost the first, I mean, there's a ton of things to do, but getting those two more involved, more productive, more consistently involved in the game has got to be a, a, a really important part of the new manager role because those two flashes, mm. but not enough. Well, well, they were the threat at Chelsea as we did, we did a breakdown today and we talked about yeah, them on, on the, the counter, counter chart. They, moments, they are, yeah. Beyond moments. But I actually think, and, and I don't disagree with your point, but I actually think the structure of the team and being in better starting positions when we have the ball will help them. The moment I see them sometimes wandering around and chasing and they're a bit all over the place, Rob. Yeah, yeah. I kind of feel like once it's a bit more settled and they've got a good starting position and, you know, if, you, if you're trying to say, you know, if you think of a Mo Salah, Mo generally is in the top half of the pitch. He'll do his closing down and whatever in the, in the last third, but he isn't necessarily running back that far. And I'm not, and I'm saying Rashford or Sancho is the Mo Salah, not that goal creation. But I always think with wide plays, if you get good starting positions, good positions where you know where you got to be defending, you know those roles. It doesn't half help your game, gives you a little bit of right. This is where I need to be. Okay, when we win the ball, I'm on the front foot and I'm, I'm going at somebody. And I think mm. some of that will help the structure, will help those those players who have got individual talent who can be match winners. But at the moment, I just feel a bit all over the place. They haven't got a, a, a designated role. Hmm. Just going back to Cristiano Ronaldo, Rob, and, and I think we have to just take a breath and, and think about what this player has done. Hmm. 801 goals is, is insanity, Rob. Good clubs, big clubs, big games, big competitions, national team. I mean, Rob, uh, eight, I mean, I didn't even play that. I, that's yeah, way more games, goals yeah. than I even play. I mean, a, a sign of the man that is still as hungry and as sharp and as, as loving scoring goals now and than his first goal, I'm sure, way back at the start of his career. I mean, it's, a, it's an astonishing achievement, Rob, isn't it? It is. And, and we, we take things for granted. And people, you know, there was people at the start of the season when the signing was, oh, he's going to hold United back. Oh, it's not good news for United. There's nothing bad. And I say that there's nothing bad about Cristiano Ronaldo being at Manchester United. Nothing bad whatsoever. I mean, his, his goals alone, but his influence, his hunger, his desire, the way he looks after himself, the way he carries himself. Michael Carrick talked about it, even when he was dropped. He did. He, he responded in the in the right way. Uh, you say it, it's incredible, the, the number of goals. It's incredible, the quality of goals. And I think a coach like Ralph Ranić coming in, in the next six months, will find the best way to get continue to get the best out mm. of Ronaldo. Absolutely, mm. he will be part of, of the plans going forward. Well, this is going to be a very awkward transition, Robbie Earl, to my underappreciated performer, who kind of the other end of the scale in terms of superstar talent and, and uh, appreciation in the game. But I thought Fred, I thought Fred, and, and, and I'm not his biggest fan, but I'll always give a player credit where credit's due. Mm. I thought he had a sneaky good game, Robbie Earl, with the way that he affected the game. Okay, he stepped on his goalkeeper's foot. That was not a great start to injure your goalkeeper and then they concede a goal. But he came back into a game. Yes, he gave some long passes away. That frustrates me and he should be better than that. But his, his, his mentality to keep going, to making those runs into the box. He got the assist for Bruno Fernandes, his first goal. He then makes another run where he forces a penalty kick. There's various times where he got back, and I remember a sliding challenge to a shot late on where Arsenal had an opportunity in the inside right position. Fred, for all the stick that he gets from all quarters, by the way, all quarters under that pressure at that stadium, a home game like that, still pops up with an important performance that affected affected the result of the game. He's not a Cristiano Ronaldo, and that's why it's kind of a in all, and, and I listen, we'd all give it Ronaldo, but he's he's uber appreciated and rightly so. But this is underappreciated. And, and yep, maybe I don't a lot of the time appreciate Footy Fred, mm. but I thought today a, a, a very effective little game in the midfield for a player that's been under a ton of pressure. So I'm giving it to Fred this it's midweek. A, and that's a very good shout, my friend, because actually he, I watched the game back against Chelsea uh, the weekend. He was very good there and he was nicking balls and he's starting things up. 
I think I once said every team needs a Fred Robbie Musk. Yeah. And, and Manchester, yeah. United, Manchester United have got one. For all the Ronaldos and Brunos and Rashfords and Sanchos, somebody's got to do some work in there to win the ball back, to follow runners and do, track and, and do stuff. And you're right, he, he, he doesn't often get the headlines, certainly won't be winning too many men in the matches, but good Did shout, under appreciate just let, me just, let me just have one more point on that. You know, sometimes you, you fall victim of your teammate or your team. Mm. Fred is with McTominay, and they're kind of similar. They're not glamorous. They're not top end central midfield players. <laughs> if Fred, right, just as an example, if Fred played with a a fully flipping zoned in poor Pogba, but Pogba's mm. doing all the running and Fred's making the making the interceptions and tackling, knocking the ball, he'd get a ton more recognition. But because it's what they call him, Mc, Mc flipping, what they call him, McFred, McFred. 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 You know, McFred. it's kind of a it's a little bit of a I don't know. I, I'm just saying, in a different situation, he wouldn't be kind of sometimes ridiculed. Uh, unfairly um, on him if he played with somebody else who was a star player and his role was much more appreciated. Anyway. Okay, my um, friend, you know, enough, yeah. enough, Fred, oh, no. love for, enough right. Fred love for, for one episode. Let's move on to the Merseyside Derby because... Uh, Hang on a minute. Should we, should we just give a tiny bit of love for Michael Carrick? Oh, yeah. Go good yeah. Shout. yeah. Good shout. Now, if a player that yeah. we, played, we both played against, yeah. really good midfield player, um, did a great job for Manchester United, won a bunch of titles and stuff like that. And to be fair, he's been on the coaching road for a little yeah. while now. 15 years uh, at the football club. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you just, are you surprised he did this today? I, mean, we're, we're, I was he, surprised, yeah. He, yeah. he said in the interview that we, we saw after and, and the players said that it was his decision. He wanted to step aside, which is, is, is very much tells you about the man, that he, he puts the football club first and thinks it's better that maybe he doesn't have an opinion on things and that Ralph Ranick comes and sees it with his own eyes. And, and I think that that's a brave and honourable thing to do. Yeah. I would have liked to have seen him stay, Rob. I would have liked to have yeah. seen him learn for six months under somebody who's one of, supposedly one of the best operators out yeah. there, who's worked with Klopp and yeah. Anglesman and some of the best. Yeah. I just think that might be an opportunity that he misses mm. wherever he's going to end up in his career. But he, I think he, he feels that I think there seemed to be a loyalty to Ollie and, and that regime, and he felt as though it was the right thing to do. Now, mm. time will tell whether whether that's that seems to be the thing. Mm. Absolutely right, and. Um... And we'll see whether he ends up regretting it. He also said he wanted to spend time with his family. I yeah. think it's difficult when you finish playing and you get straight back into that world and you're away yeah. at weekends again for the wife and the kids. It's not yeah. ideal. So I, I understand that. But hopefully he'll come He'll come back mm. at some point. Yeah, we'll, I like we'll, him, Rob. We'll I like what I've seen. I think there's, there's, a, there's a manager in there if, if he wants yeah. to go down that route. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll wait and see. So we will move it on to the, uh, yep. the Merseyside Derby. Yeah. Uh, much anticipated game. I think there was a little worry from the Everton fans if Liverpool really opened up on them. There was a little bit of bad blood still circulating from mm. the game last season with the Van Dijk um, injury due to the Pickford tackle. And Jurgen Klopp, Rob, we, we have to say probably the first thing in there, he, he put it out there, didn't he? We, we, we saw a, before the game interview and he put it out there that, you know, he, he thought there was some, in his words, dirty challenges that, that weren't... Um, that weren't looked at by the referee, and that's the reason that he, he, his players got injured and possibly mm. played its part in, in, in Liverpool's up topsy turvy season last year. So everything was sort of to play for, and in the end, Liverpool just showed, I thought, their class and their their maturity in possible difficult circumstances away from home. What you said about Arsenal, you know, getting through difficult times in difficult places. Liverpool have got. Liverpool can handle mm, Europe, yeah. Europe and domestically. They mm. can handle being under stress, being under pressure, difficult moments, and come through with with a plum and goals to spare from all over the front line. I mean, I, I think it's probably the most dominant Merseyside derby in terms of Liverpool, Rob. I think I've seen for a long time. I mean. I mean, Everton tried their very best and there was a moment when they get the goal back to 2-1 where they had a little rally up and the fans were great at Cudders Goodison Park and tried to get behind the team. But of course, they go in for half-time and we're like, that's great. And, and and Rafa needed that a little bit. But I still think there's a strong sense of this Liverpool team. I mean, some of the football they played, Rob, and some of the goals, some of the finishes, Mo Salah's finish at pace where he has to open himself up and redirect the ball and find a little angle around him. Running at pace is amazing. Jordan Henderson's goal as well, bent with his left foot into the into the corner, was stunning. Their football going forward now is so far ahead of the others 
is scary. It really is scary, Rob, the way that they are creating the actual individuals are at peak level. Diogo Jota, again, I what a, what a signing that is and what a player that could score so many goals for this club over a period of years. And, and, and that was the main story. Liverpool stunningly good. Everton had that little bit of hope, Rob, with that goal. But again, in the second half, uh, Salah takes over, Jota gets involved, and it's just an attacking quality that I think is quite rare, Rob, isn't it? Like, yeah, you get flash from that. Man City. Yeah. You know, even in the past, I mean, that the front line of uh, Sturridge and Luis Suarez, Suarez and Ryan yeah, Sterling. Yeah, and yeah. I'm looking back to other front lines that have been brilliant. Um, of course, the, set, the way that City play at times with Aguero yeah. and De Bruyne. Yeah. But there this was a bit, there was a bit of job made. for Robin on the Chelsea days. Remember yeah. that one, job for Robin, maybe Joe Cole or a, a good, good Johnson, that kind yeah. of thing where threats come from all different players. They've all got a different profile. They all can hurt you in their own way. Yeah. You think you've got, you know, you, you plug Bobby Firmino into that as well, Rob, so that, you know, what Jota gives is, is a great versatility that he can play in a number of those spots. So if somebody needs right. a rest, if somebody's off form, somebody gets injured or suspended or whatever, it's it's light for light quality. And he brings yeah, so it means two, Rob, isn't it? It means they can yeah. they can have they have to get two injured players mm. before they put out a slightly weakened front three because of Jota's ability to play in different spots. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's uh you know, you think about it in midfield as well. They've got cover in midfield. Thiago, I thought the midfield three, Rob, I think I said it on the show. Yeah, you, you know, about it's that balance, kind yeah. of familiar now. And Jordan's mm. runs to the right and Thiago getting on the ball and Fabinho doing his right. I think there's a, a little understanding now that they're developing with the reps that again is a is 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 good because Thiago's what he brings is very different to the other two players. Now the protection might not be as strong, and that's something Liverpool have to be a little bit careful of, but the three of them doing different things by the way absolutely different things worked well together and will continue to work well together as long as i guess tiago can stay stay healthy and just on that point my friend you lead me very nicely into my underappreciated performer of the week and a bit like cristiano ronaldo at Manchester united you would think mo salah or jogo jota maybe gets the headlines but i'm going for my good old buddy oh not again my good old buddy Captain oh. Jordan Henderson, my friend. How many times have you... You must have had him 25 He's, times underappreciated. And he will continue to be him. underappreciated as long as... And we did a little breakdown, Rob, and, and, and sometimes we get a chance to get things on air um, if we can. And we, we, we often, you know, are always asking our VT, can you put this together? And we, we had a shot of Jordan Henderson before the game. Like, mm. focus, concentrated. Yeah, Jurgen Klopp would talk about emotional control and they didn't want his players to lose that and get caught up in physical fights. But Jordan Henderson led the way. We, we see him down that right-hand side, Rob, almost showing a little bit more creativity than we've seen in the past, playing nice balls. And we saw the finish for the first goal that sets up the game, yeah, the left-foot finish. We see him now and then barking orders to one or two whose standards might just drop. I, ju I just feel he's the epitome of what Jurgen Klopp wants in a captain and the way his team plays. And I go back to a, a, a question that I think I asked you a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if, if it was on the potty or, or just, I think we were in student. I said, is Jordan Henderson a Liverpool great? Is he in with those greats? Because Liverpool have had some great, great players and, and, and Gerrard and, and Dalgleish and Rush and Sooners are in there. Is Jordan Henderson starting to be is Jordan Henderson at least in the conversation for Liverpool great and and that is a very very high end exclusive group it is a very high end exclusive group and i would say he's in the conversation rob yeah i mean it's such a it's such a, a difficult group to get into mm. um you know if he can if he can play like he's playing now and he can lift another premier league title or a, or a champions league title if he's lifting that trophy he's in mm. because it's just too much too much good stuff and uh, and he's driving the team forward too much. It's just like that. It's such a hard question. Would you would you put him in as a Liverpool great right now, or does he need I, a little bit more? Or, or... I think I would. He's, he, he delivered a title or helped be part of the captain that delivered a title for yeah. three years. He's yeah. won a Champions League, the tournament that they think. Yeah. He continues to keep playing from from a guy who. Remember back in the day, Rob, when he signed from Sunderland and people were sort of saying, mm. oh, what is, is this? Is he, yeah, is, is he I think Sir Alex Ferguson talks about his running gate. So, listen, yeah. great conversation and one for another day, but Jordan Henderson certainly 
uh, my underappreciated performer and continues to be a big, big part of what Liverpool do. Just before we move on on this one, mate, because there's, there's a little bit of pressure maybe starting to turn on, on, on Rafa. No wins in the last eight Premier League matches. Um, a little bit of concern. Obviously, being an ex-Liverpool manager, that was always going to come up. But we, I think we both believe, A, he should be given more time and B, that he will be given time. But yeah. there are some problems at Everton, Rob, that go deeper than maybe just Rafa sitting at the side. It looks to me like... In the past, mistakes in the past are starting to hurt them now. That's right, because they have spent a lot of money over recent mm. seasons. Mm. And, and Farad Mashiri in at the club, I think he, he always wanted to do that. And he, and he put a lot of trust in his staff. Marcel Brands, and I think we all agree that it's good to have a fairly high-profile, obvious director of football, mm. as, as takes control of that money for the most part, um, with his obvious backroom staff and the recruitment team. But I think when you look at, I've lost my list now. But when you when you look at some of the players that have come into the football club, yeah. for kind of they spent the, a couple of seasons ago. There's kind of like a lot of thirty million dollar players: mm. uh, Alex Awobi, Moisey Keane, Alan uh, Gibbamy was around th- uh, thirty yeah. million. You had the wages, and you had the the flamboyance of James Rodriguez, yeah. this trusted, and maybe that's to do with um, Carlo Ancelotti. But you know, a lot of money spent on players that haven't really done it. And this summer was a warning for me. Is like we can't keep doing that because of financial fair play. We've got to find the finances to make a build a new stadium, which would be fantastic. And when you're only spending two million bucks and you're bringing in Salomon Rondon and, and Andrews Townsend, and Townsend's done great by the way, yeah, but he's he wasn't wanted at Crystal Palace. Then it's like, wow, Everton are, are having to pull the bouts in. And Rafa Benitez is, is the guy that's got to try and get a tune from them all when everybody's fit, which they will be in the next couple of weeks. We understand from actually from Mashiri today. Uh, then they're going to improve. But right now, it's a tough job. And I'm not blaming Rafa Benitez right mm. now for where they're at. They were mid-table the last two seasons, I think 10th, season before that 12th. So it's been no great shakes. And it's mm. not a great squad of players to work with. But maybe he'll get some help in January. He'll get his best players back. And maybe they'll edge back to that area. Mm. I just You just worry. You look over your shoulder, Rob, and they're like yeah. five points in relegation zone. So no, that- Looks to me, and owners get a bit, a bit twitchy if, if that gap yeah. starts to, to close. And and you're right, I, I think there's many things you look at. I, I did a little research, I was just thinking about the time that Jurgen Klopp, I think set, nearly seven years now, Jurgen Klopp's been in charge of Liverpool. Everton have had six managers in that time Martinez, yeah. Kuman, Allardyce, Silva, Angelotti, Rafa Benitez. And you've got bits of players from all those times, and some unhappy, and some it just feels so, but it's not like somebody's got to be given some time to address the, the squad, to balance it out and start putting something together. But, but also, Rob, let me interrupt there. Just Marcel Brands. Like, he's been the he's been the common mm. for, for a lot of them, Rob. Yeah. And he's been the, you know, that's the whole point of having director of football. Correct. That this guy is trusted to bring in players that suit the football club and will suit <laughs> the next few managers. Now, when those players don't work out and different managers have tried with mm. those players, then, yeah. well, hang on that's a minute. The um, yeah. those, mm. Well, who was it? Yeah. So yeah. he should be under as much pressure as yeah. anybody else, particularly if Mashiri in the future wants to spend more money. Does he trust yeah. Marcel Brands again with it? I don't know. And, that, and mm. that's why that position is accountable, like the head coach is, because yeah. it's pretty important stuff that he's trying to do to make this this club much better. Yeah, work to do for Rafa. Hopefully you'll get uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who believes, closer to fitness. Yeah, Mina close to fitness. Get yeah. Something like his best 11 out there and they can be more competitive. Let's move it to um, Villa Park, Aston Villa. Um, Took on Manchester City, the return of Jack Grealish, amongst other things. Steven Gerrard, two wins in two in his first two Premier League games. Probably thought this Premier League pretty easy. (laughs) Came up against one of the better teams. Um, But still were competitive. Nolly Watkins made it a a more interesting uh, game and he got the goal back for for Villa that made it 2-1. But City football, in in the end, found a way. I mean, the Bernardo Silva finish, mate, was... (laughs) Right up there with it'll be it'll be in there as one of the goals of the season. So brilliant mm. finish. And and um in days like this, no one's talking about strikers, Rob. And yeah, and Full like and you, you know, your belief all the way through this mm. has been that Pep Guardiola will find a way yep. to get people in the box. And we certainly have seen that in the last couple of matches where there's been like four players in the six yard box for a tap in, that he will find a way. Whoever plays, whoever it is, if it's a Gundogan, probably not going to get 13 goals, but it might be a Bernardo Silva. Mm-hmm. You know, it might be a Raheem Sterling, a Riyad Mahrez, a Gabriel. It will spread the goals around. And this yeah. is a very 
another very good victory. First kind of weird goal, wasn't it? Uh, Ruben Diaz with a, with a yeah, yeah. weird, awkward-looking shot that found its way in. And then the volley from Bernardo Silva was a stunning goal. So they keep doing it. And the football is so almost automatic now that they could, I mean, they could, they're on a run now. I mean, they could, they could yeah. totally go on a run yeah. and lose hardly anything. It was, to the it end was of the this season. time last year, it wasn't, wasn't it? Right. They went on that 20-odd game run and, yeah. and pretty much wrapped it up. And as you say, it looks like City uh, can do that do that kind of thing again. Mm. Steven Gerrard will, will at least be pleased that his team were competitive. I think late on, that uh, Ellison had to come up with a decent save to yep. stop Villa maybe get, getting an equaliser in that game. So, I feel it's the kind of game that, that Stevie G knew that, you know, they're going to have to do well to get anything out of. But again, they've shown competitive. I think there's a bit of structure. You, you can start to see his influence on the game. Can you talk a little bit about Jack Grealish? Robert? I wanted to, I wanted to talk about that. Yeah, I wanted to talk yeah. about that. Um, Jack Grealish was sub for Manchester City, came on in, in the second half uh, for City at Villa. And a mixture, I'm not going to say he was totally booed, but a mixture of, of, of some cheers, some boos, Rob, as Jack Grealish came on. Were you were you kind of okay with that? Not really. No. I mean, of course, fans fans have got... Every, I mean, they pay their money, they can do yeah. whatever they want, right? Yeah. We, well, that's, that's a given, of course. Yeah. Um, I was surprised, Rob, given his obvious, obvious love for the football club. And when somebody comes in at $139 million and you've got a chance to go to and work for Pep Guardiola at Manchester City, and I know it's tough for the Villa fans to accept it, but surely they understand that a, you know, a, a local lad, I think he's been at the academy since he's six years yeah. old, he obviously loves the club. He's telling you the day how he's left the club right. in the dressing room and his tears in his eyes when he said he had to make the decision to leave the club. Um, so I just, I just, I thought it'd be the other way. I thought yeah. it'd be like, he'd yeah, be getting plenty of appreciation yeah. what he's done. Um, so that's why I think us and lots of other pundits and former players on radio shows and podcasts and TV broadcasts were really surprised with this reaction. Um, they're a giant of a club, Aston Villa. Mm. We know that. We know what they've won mm. in European football and English football. Tons of titles. Tons of titles, Aston Villa. So I get that. And and they sort of said, oh, you know, you've left a, you've left a big club to go to Manchester City. Um, I, I was still surprised, mate. I was still surprised, yeah, and, and and he hasn't found it easy jumping from no, no. Villa to Man City. He doesn't get as much ball. It's not he isn't quite so important and key. Mm. So everybody feeds him the ball at Villa. That's not the case of City. Mm. He's got to pop in and, and fill in his little spot and do his thing when he gets opportunities. That he said is is what he's found difficult. But mm. but no. What about you, Rob? What do you, what do you, yeah, what do you I, think? Yeah, I, I was disappointed. Now let me tell you why I, why I was disappointed. Not least because, like you say, he's been in the academy. He's worked his way through. He got a big transfer fee for the football club that they can go and reinvest. But it wasn't like a Harry Kane situation. Like, oh, I'm not happy contract over there. Aston Villa had put a clause in his contract to the value of money that they were accepting. Manchester City did the right thing, paid that money. So everything was above board. It wasn't one of them where down tools, I want to right. go to City. No, I Which know. I would have understood then if the Villa fans go, hold on a minute, Jack. You know, you've been... Yeah. But he did everything the right way and, and still loves the football club. I believe he said his family still got a Villa season tickets. Yeah, sure so will. I was a little bit disappointed. I was a little bit disappointed in the Villa fans. And I hope that it might be just first-time reaction. Maybe the next time he goes there, there'll be a bit more appreciation for what he did at, at, at the football club. Because, um, you know, of course, he was a hero to many at Villa Park and, and he, he's moved on and, you know, he, he he leaves the club in 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 a I thought in in, in an honourable way. So yeah, just question for you. What one word answer? Worst fan reaction? Brighton drawing <laughs> drawing against Leeds United, and get, and and Harry and uh, Graham Potter getting booed, or Jack Grealish getting booed. What was the worst fan reaction out of those two? Jack Grealish getting booed. Mm. Jack Grealish getting booed. Yeah. That's a long time at a football club where yeah. you've given everything and been the guy. Yeah. So, yeah, for me, uh, the Jack Grealish one just just about sees it. Okay. Let's go to Watford. Uh, Watford, Chelsea. For a long period in this game, it was 1 1. But we have to say, actually, due, um, during this game, Rob, there was uh, another emergency, wasn't there, with a, a fan in, in the stadium. And mm. fortunately, the players, uh, I think it was one of the players actually. Let the referee know a bit similar to the situation we saw at Newcastle and, and Tottenham. Uh, fortunately, the medical staff were there; they were able to deal with it. The play, the game was the match was suspended for a time, and I believe we're hearing that there's, there's relative news that the, the person in, involved is doing reasonably well. Stabilised, yeah, yeah, in these yeah, circumstances. Yeah. So, 
Um, yeah, unfortunate circumstances which the game went, but um, Chelsea got the win in the end. It was important to them. Um, it looked as though it was going to go 1 1 for a while, and Ziyech came on and ended up getting the winner. Um, what do we take from Chelsea on, on this one, Rob? Um, consistency is, is there a little bit of a thought maybe they need to sort out that front line and get a little bit of, of rhythm and, and kind of consistent flow in, in those front yeah. three, or is, is, is swapping it about maybe what they're going to do all season? I think they probably will, Robert. I, my main thoughts of this game was when I saw the Chelsea lineup, I'm like, oh, this could be a problem for Chelsea because a lot of reliables, leaders, consistent performers were on the bench. Like, you can't mm. play everybody uh, every single match, all Robert. I, you know, look at the bench, there's Jorginho on the bench, Thiago Silva on the bench, Lukaku on the bench. You know, Hudson Adoy has been good recently. Hakim Ziyech, who came on and won the game for them. Uh, Timo Werner hasn't been that important for them this mm. season. But still, like, important players out and rested yeah. uh, and out injured or whatever with N'Golo Kante as well. So I thought it was a tough one. It was a tough one for them. Thomas Hugo said that they were lucky to get the three points. Um, yeah. But it does go back to their squad. And Mason Mount fit again now. Almost scored early on when he hits the post. Yeah. He gets his goal uh, a little later. Hakim Ziyech off the bench. Of course, Pulisic started the game. Uh, Kai Havertz as well. Havertz hasn't really done it yet, has he? Kai Havertz no, has, still hasn't quite, really done it. Yeah. It's like Timo Werner. There's been flashes. Mm. Um, but still, amongst the amount of talent they've got up there, they're getting the job done. I thought this was a really important three points for them. Yeah. Because some of those players took, got a bit of a break. Allow others to get back fit again. Um, but yeah, that, that, they're in that kind of run at the moment where... They're they're pretty they're pretty consistent and pretty solid. This one was a tricky one, but they got through it. I kind of feel like it'd be good to get Big Ron back in the team, back yeah. central, and like you know yeah. get that piece in place, and then work out what's playing underneath him. Almost feels like you know he, he's been out and then he's been waiting. He's been on the bench. Just feel I don't know if it'll be against West Ham this week, whether they'll throw them in or, or next week or two. But certainly, like I feel like he could get back to leading yeah. that front line. It freshens up, Rob, doesn't it? It freshens yeah. up the front line. No, he bit. wasn't in great goal scoring form, was he? Just no. got the injury, but you yeah. know, it's a fresh start. Re kicks it again, and I just think he does give them something different in that front line. You know, as much as Pulisic, as much as Habits, as much as Vern have, have done a job up there, it just looks different. Feels different when he when he's around. Also, a benefit from the rest, Rob. Yeah, you know, he's injured. I get that, but he's resting. Mm. He's had those few weeks to rest and recuperate. He's had a busy summer like everybody else. I think there was talk about him being feeling a little tired mm. over the last couple of months. So the rest with that injury, back into training, obviously about ready to play again. I think we're doing good. I think I think it's a good from, time for him to come back and, and make an immediate impact. Yeah, possibly against West Ham this weekend. Big game there at the yeah. London Stadium, the early kickoff on Saturday. Just before we move on, Rob, I, I just want to ask you, and obviously because of him being American, and uh, I sat down with him last week. Uh, did an inside the mind with Christian Pulisic, um, and, and he, he, he opened up a little bit, but started to you know give me a little few insights into where he is. And I was talking about where he preferred to play and getting minutes. And he said he's in decent shape now. We just need to get a consistent run of games. He started this game, Rob. Um, maybe wasn't the best performance he's had in, in the blue of Chelsea, but. Has he got to start delivering goals and assists to stay in this team if he's going to be one of those three places? And he said he doesn't mind any of those three that he plays. He even said yeah. he, wouldn't, he wouldn't mind playing on the right if he has to. But it actually, I kind of feel as though with the quality that they have and the potential of other players, to force the manager's hand to stay in the team, he's got, he's got to get the goals and assists. Or else I, I fear he's going to be a super sub. Yes, I agree, Rob. I think at this particular moment in time with the forwards uh, that are there, he has to persuade or convince that Thomas Tuchel that he's more than a super sub because when he does come on, he looks a million bucks. He's sharp, he's quick, he gets by people really, really quickly. But when he has starts, then he doesn't seem to have the same threat or continued threat. Now, again, it's a little unfair. He's had a period of time out of the game. He is an incredibly talented footballer. And for most of the teams, he's going to be doing his thing regularly in a regular spot. But this club is different. It's a it's a, a very, very high level and lots of attacking players at the club. So finding ways to be consistently affecting the game. I think I've said it a, a lot about Christian Pulisic. We know he's capable of amazing moments. He's got to persuade or convince his manager that he deserves to be one of the first guys out there, one of the first guys in that front three mm. because of his consistent productivity. And that 
you know, he's had a couple of starts recently and, you know, he's, he's been okay. Um, it's not easy, but, but it, that's got to be the challenge with him is a, is a mental thing to, to be consistent. And that's not easy at a club like Chelsea, yeah. but, but, but it's true. He's got to, he's got to do that. Else he'll be rotated in and out. Like, you know, like all the others, to be fair. I mean, there's not really anybody set in stone, Rob, in those front three. No. Lukaku, probably if he's fit and, and healthy, he'll probably be the number nine. But the two number tens behind, I mean, Mount, I guess, probably will be the, the most mm. solid in there. And the other the other place really is up for grabs with the other players they've got. The last game we want to uh, just dive in on, mate, is Tottenham at home to Brentford. Uh, Tottenham to Brentford, nil. Uh, another three points for Antonio Conte. It wasn't maybe as, as comfortable as he would like, but they got the job done. Uh, from Tottenham's point of view, three points, uh, own goal. I think Canyos with the first, and then uh, Youngman's son, lovely mm. finish, uh, give and go, and he runs half the length of the pitch to, to, to tap home. Um, positives for, for Spurs, another three points, climbing the table. I think that's it. Is that him in six, 22 points, right on the. Uh, Right on the the, the shirt tails of, of the top four now. So there's the only disappointment, Rob. And again, um, in our highlights package, I, I did it a couple of times. Harry Kane, one goal, one assist. That came in a Newcastle game early in the season. Can't yeah. seem to get his Premier yeah. League goals flowing at all. Was he 23 goals last year? 23 and 14, goals, 14 assists. 14 assists last season. So that that's uh, that's kind of mystifying a little bit to have that much of a drop off. Mm, but scoring um, what, goals internationally as well, isn't he? You know, goes oh, away and gets seven goals in two games. You think, oh, he's going to kickstart yeah. again. It hasn't happened. No, but they, I, I think it will. I think mm. it will get back to regular scoring. Um, again, like they're they're scrapping their way through their game at Burnley. Of course, the weekend was postponed. They have to play Burnley in the matchup the, in the uh, makeup game. Yeah, if they win that game, Robbie, or they go to fourth. Same games played as everybody else. They got a fourth Spurs, mm. who himself said, "You know, our level, we are, we're not at a high level right now, yeah. but they're still finding ways, and and they have got some good players there, good attacking players, and we know that Antonio Conte will will create a foundation to this team to improve. He said it. He doesn't want the up and the down. He wants a stable base, which he'll be working on every day in training now, yeah. probably to yeah. the end of the season." Um, so they're in a good spot. I saw the goal. He's regular on, got forward from wing back. He crossed the ball over to Hyomin Sun for that second goal. I mean, I, I, I think we we gotta we gotta carefully watch the steady progress mm. of a man that knows how to win and knows how to coach a team that aren't at their best, nowhere near their best, and there will be new players coming in, and this team is nowhere near mm. the finish article that he wants to see, Antonio Conte. But they win the game in hand against yeah. Burnley, who are the third worst team in the league right now. And they're in fourth spot above Arsenal and Spurs. So, all to play for for that fourth spot. Spurs will be there or thereabouts. I I, I really think that. And, and I think what one part of, of his makeup that doesn't get enough credit is his man management, Rob, because right now he's working with a group. And I think he probably, in the privacy of his own office with his close staff, will be thinking, half of these are not really my type. Half of these are not really who I want to go forward with. But he's got a way of keeping players on side, players committed to work for him. Like you say, he brings that organisation in a winning kind of spirit in the dressing room and things continue. But I I, I look at some of those players who, who were with him, Rob, and I'm thinking, in 12 months' time, I don't think they'll be at Tottenham if Antonio Conte is at Tottenham. Yeah. But he does a good job of, of not shutting the door on anybody, yeah. not yeah. putting somebody and, out. And the making them to... better. Making yeah. them better through teamwork and through yeah. organisation and shape. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, exciting times for, for Tottenham, maybe, to look ahead with Antonio Conte. Just some of the results, mate, rounding up. Uh, West Ham won, Brighton won. West Ham got the lead through Suchet. Brighton um, late equaliser through Neil Mope. It's his first goal for a long while. Uh, lovely overhead kick, got Brighton back into the game. So, he'd have got cheered for that, I'm sure, Graham Potty wouldn't have got booed for that one, would he? <laughs> Newcastle won, Norwich won. This was the, the interesting game my friend, because I, I, I was watching the game and you were doing the broadcast and then, what was it, like 10 minutes on the clock, um, Kieran Clark makes a mistake and then grabs Kuki uh, back and, and Newcastle Carter. down to 10 men after after 10 minutes and you, you saw Eddie Howe's face as if to say, oh no, here we go, here we go. Yeah, there's six points to drift, Rob, Newcastle. Yeah, I no mean, it's, kind of, 14. it's kind of unthinkable to to consider that they, they've got an incredible scrap just to stay in the division. 
Burnley um, at the weekend, my friend. Oh, blimey. Is it? Is it? Is that St. James's? It's yeah, St. It is. James's Park at home. That's it. If that is in three <laughs> points, I'm telling you. 15 games, no wins. Nobody's ever stayed up from that position. No yeah. And, stayed up from and they've got, they, after that game, Rob, they got a rot, they got a rotten run of yeah. all the big boys. There's six points adrift right now on the, on the, you know, the pre- precipice of difficult matches. You know, the old, the old bottom of Christmas, you know, they're, they're, they're likely to be bottom of Christmas and we know that's tough to recover from. You threw a question at me about what, what's worse. Will, will Eddie Howe be there at the end of the season, my friend? Will, will, will Newcastle? What are they going to do? Take... What are they going to? What are they going to? I'm, I'm asking. The I'm question. saying yes. I'm saying do yes. You, you think he'll be there? He'll be there. I think, you don't think been... Newcastle will go. This hasn't worked, Teddy. Off you pop. Well, they, 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 they might later into. Yeah, yeah that's a question. Mate. The I, I, this fair, is... But I, I'm saying no. I'm yeah. saying it, there is a little bit of mm. a little I'm, bit of I'm, improvement. I'm with you. I mean, oh, listen, yeah. put. Two or three games together, win two and a draw. They can go on a run. It, it, it could yeah. look a little bit different, but yeah, I mean, they've got to, got to start happening soon, though. The Newcastle, uh, Southampton two, Leicester two. Um, Benham Rogers team looking a little bit more like themselves getting goals, but we're disappointed in uh, allowing Southampton to, to uh, get back into the game. And Wolves nil, Burnley nil. Wolves had the, probably the better of the play in that one. Burnley still can't quite get their rhythm going. Just another draw for them down at, at, at the bottom of the table. So they're sort big, of big one for Leeds. Did you mention Leeds? Big win for oh, them. We didn't go, oh, we didn't go. That was the last yeah. one. Leeds won. Palace nil won it late on. Yeah, good show. Cool. Yeah, they, they they're scrapping away a little bit, mm. and the, the fans are right behind them at Ellen Road, and it was a massive game. And uh, penalty yeah, kick just... wasn't it? it? Was a penalty VAR wasn't it? Goyes put his hand up as his oh, balls yeah, come yeah. in. Yeah, it was, it was, a, it was the right shoulder. call, wasn't it? It was the right, the right call. call. Yeah. VAR got onto it. And so that, that, that gives goal. Leeds a little... I think Bielsa said that Leeds mm. United now can breathe a little bit. I, you know, it gives yeah. them a little bit of... Uh, up to 15 points, so big win for Leeds. And I think they will improve Bamford, of course, to come back for them. Okay, my friend, we're, we're nearly 50 minutes in on our midweek podcast uh, on Match Week 14. Uh, good day for the big teams, Manchester United City... Liverpool, Chelsea, Spurs all got victories. And on a day when Michael Carrick ended his 15-year association with Manchester United, we look forward to the Ralph Ranick era that starts at Crystal Palace or against Crystal Palace on Sunday. We will be back on that Sunday, December the 5th. We'll recap all of match week 15. West Ham host Chelsea in the big game early on Saturday. Villa take on Leicester, so Stevie G against Brendan Rodgers. That's an interesting one. But for now, I'm Earl, he's Musty, together with the two Robbies. Thanks for watching and listening. Be safe and stay healthy. It's a good night from me. And it's a good night from him. Good Good night. night. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.